Hey guys, welcome back. This is Fun with Fallen Flags, episode 55. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about the new workbench that I've got and the uh, NCE system that we're going to upgrade, and then we're going to integrate that with JMRI, which is a um, computer application which get, lets you allow, allows you to use a GUI to modify the CV values on your uh, system, and then uh, there's a lot of other things it has too, but essentially that's what I'm going to start using it for. Um, now, to start out with, um, I just threw a couple of pictures up of the new workspace. So I've cleaned off the workbench area, painted the uh, the walls a uh, nice sky blue, would make a good backdrop, and I plan on putting some part of the layout in this room as well. But I can't wait to get started building stuff in this room. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the NCE system that I have on the bench. So let's get started with that. Now, just a note, this is a older NCE system that I've had. I bought new, and the chip in there is from 1999. The most current chip that NCE has is from 2007. So talking with Ed from NCE, uh, he pointed me to, their, uh, to that chip, and I'm going to upgrade that, and then we're going to integrate the NCE system into the um, JMRI application. Now, to note, this system is a older system that has a serial port on the front. It's not a newer one. It has a USB connection. So we're also going to have to use a, a USB to serial cable as well. So that'll complicate things a little bit, but we'll get through it. So let's get started. As we get going, just want to note that if you do have JMRI installed, you want to uninstall it before you do anything else. Um, also, your unit should be disconnected from power, the layout. Um, I went through the instructions that came with the uh, PowerPro decoder here, and it doesn't specifically say some of that, but having worked on electronics for a long time, um, you want to definitely disconnect it from that. Watch out for static electricity. Even better if you have one of the static guard wrist guards uh, that you see some of the IT guys using when they're working on uh, the inside of equipment. That would be even better. I don't have one of those with me here. Uh, so I'm just going to make sure that I watch static electricity and that type of thing. Because, I mean, we are handling computer chips. So anyway, this thing is disconnected. It's got a little piece of track that it's connected to, but there's nothing on it. So um, it's got a few wires on the front and um, these would connect to the power source these are disconnected so we're good to go so the chip is in the lower right hand corner as you're looking down on top of it so it's this device it's this um, integrated circuit right here so we're going to pry this up and you want to be very gentle doing this and always try to avoid hitting any of the pins or the leads so and I cheated a little because I loosened it already. <laughs> Yours won't come out that easy. So, um, but it's not difficult to take out. And this, on the top of the chip, it says NCE Corp 3107C. So, make sure you line up the pins. Nice even pressure as you put it in. Uh, you may have to line up each of the pins into the socket that they go into. And then don't twist it or anything, just nice even pressure. And you'll know when it seats because it'll kind of snap into place just like that. And that's it. That's all we do. I'm going to put our old pin, our old. Uh, um, uh, chip into storage. For some reason, if I ever wanted to roll back, I have it. Um, I doubt I'm ever going to use it, but I do have it. So at this point, we want to make sure that the uh, um, unit functions. So I'm going to screw the, um, uh, the top piece back on, and then I'm going to just give it a test run to make sure everything's good. Take it to power, 
And when I boot up the system, the ProCab that I have will report the current version on it of um, 2007. So if I see that, then I'm good to go. But I'm still going to go ahead and make sure that you know the uh, it recognizes an engine and it can accelerate, decelerate, uh, sound effects, lights, things like that. I just want to make sure I give it a little test drive before we go any further. So let me go ahead and do all that, and then we'll start talking about the JMRI integration. Okay, so anyway, the troubleshooting is done. All right, so the chip works. Everything's good. We're moving on to the USB to uh, computer connection. So this unit is old back to 1999, so it has a serial connection on the front. So I had to get a USB to serial connection cable. So it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you plug the serial connection to the face of this, you plug the USB connection to your computer, you run the device driver disk, it has a .exe executable file that you just run, it'll install the right uh, uh, driver, grab the one out of the folder that matches your operating system, and again I'm doing PC so you know if you have a different operating system other than this one or even specific to 7, uh, you may have to reach out, but fairly straightforward. Uh, I spoke with, uh, chatted with through email, uh, Ed at NCE, uh, he said this is the one he uses at home. So, you know, that's what I'm going with. And then uh, Karen at a uh, company that uh, sold me this, that Ed pointed me to, was uh, rr-circuits.com. So I'll put the link, this information down in the text of the, of the, um, of the video, but rr dash c i r k i t s dot com is the name of the company so easy to find on the web you attach it to each end it allows through the drivers and the hardware connection it allows the nce system to talk to your computer and um, then it will allow this unit to show up in jmri so uh, just follow the instructions. Uh, the default is when it installs, it installs uh, two different hardware devices in your computer and it will show up as COM3. I had a conflict with COM3, so I had to assign mine to COM5, but you want the JMRI, JMRI application to say COM3 or COM5 or whatever port you assign it to, and you want the device manager in Windows to also say that it's the same COM port. They have to talk to each other over the same port. If they're not on the same port, it's not going to work. So you got to get that done. But again, JMRI has really good documentation. NCE has really good documentation. Some of it overlaps. So um, if you have any questions, reach out to either of the two companies. They're great to deal with. So. Um, Anyway, like I said, I switched mine to COM5, didn't have a problem, and uh, after that I moved on to the JMRI install. Now, JMRI has a great website and lots and lots of documentation, so I just followed their install. They actually helped me through the port conflict thing. So, again, before you install it, make sure you grab the uh, most current version and Uninstall any previous version if you happen to be messing around with it. Uninstall it. Uh, get the latest production release. Do not install the test release if it, it'll have a newer date, but that's the one they're working the bugs out of. That's the one that the guinea pigs are using. You don't want to be the guinea pig. Just use the stable, most recent production release, and it'll say which one that is. So, and it'll also tell you that there's a newer release, and it'll, it'll warn you not to use it. So. Um, Make sure the COM ports match. Follow the JMRI installation instructions, as well as if happen, it happens to not communicate, uh, if there's any troubleshooting issues. When you first go in, you may have to assign the uh, COM port uh, in the JMRI uh, application. It might look like it fails, but you might just have to edit the connection. So again, follow their instructions, and it's uh, um, fairly, fairly easy once I got past the uh, the cable issue, 
then the rest of it was uh, went really well. Um, also, if you do have a question, reach out to the JamRI folks. There's a ton of users on there. Uh, you can ask questions. Uh, you know, there's uh, forums. Definitely reach out to them. They're the experts. I'm certainly not. Um, but that's really all I have for uh, uh, this episode. Uh, I got into JMRI. I assigned uh, Engine 453 all the specs that I wanted to, the name, the manufacturer, the, the uh, engine number, the builder, and all that, road name. So, and then, so I'm starting to build an inventory now. And now I get to go through all of my engines and put them on this, in the system so that I can then tweak the uh, various settings, the CVs and stuff. So I've already been in JMRI, it's very cool. And I've already set it up so that I've got uh, where it's in the acceleration and deceleration lag. So it won't just, you know, turn the wheel up to 25 and it takes off like a rocket. It takes off slowly. You can build the speed tables and all that stuff. Everything that you used to have to do through this, where you manually enter keys and stuff, um, there's a place in the GUI on your computer desktop, and I was messing with this around with this last night, and it was a blast. I even brought my wife down to show her, and she just thought it was pretty cool. She's not a train person. She puts up with the train person, but um, she thought it was pretty amazing, uh, some of the stuff that I was able to do. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have a newer system, then good job. <laughs> Mine now has been updated so that mine is a uh, current system as of 2019. So it's been 20 years, but now I'm going to sit down for the rest of the night and probably next day or two and input lots and lots of steam and diesel engines. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, by all means, if you have a question or comment, shoot it out to me. And uh, don't hesitate to subscribe to the YouTube channel and join the HO Scale Tutorials Facebook group as well. Uh, we've got almost 1,500 members, and uh, there's new content that is getting put on there by members and myself every week. So thanks again, and have fun.